Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about storyline triggers and how to get the most out of storyline triggers. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome back. My name is Jeff Batt, and if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts covering everything from A to Z on anything learning development. And these are topics how to get the best out of your audio, how to use Camtasia, Articulate Storyline, and more. You can also download free templates inside of Articulate Storyline 360, as well as XAPI and video templates. And if any of these topics and tools are new to you, you can check out full courses covering everything from A to Z in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. Now, I've taught a lot of people how to use Articulate Storyline, taught a lot of students both in person and online as well. And the thing that I've seen with somebody who's first starting out with Articulate Storyline is really grasping triggers and what triggers do. But not only adding triggers and adjusting some of the settings for triggers, but getting the most out of triggers, which means understanding how to do or add a trigger to something besides just a click. Most of the time we stick with just click and this happens. Now with triggers, it's really a matter of understanding what you want to happen. Start with the end in mind. Anytime I talk about triggers, I always want to emphasize that. Start with the end in mind. Now, even though we're learning about triggers inside of Storyline, this can apply to any tool that you may be using, even PowerPoints, or even if you get into programming, these concepts will help you out in any tool, no matter what. So it's just the basics of programming, really, uh, understanding how to make something happen when something else happens. It comes down to a couple key points, and we're going to talk about that. The first thing, just to put it into context that we're going to be talking about, is a trigger inside of Articulate Storyline 360. Now, when you add a trigger, what a trigger is, is a trigger will basically make something happen. That's what I'm talking about. Start with the end in mind. What do you want to have happen? Do you want to show a layer? Do you want to jump to a next page? Do you want to populate an email? Do you want to send an XAPI statement? That is a trigger. Now, the part that we're gonna be focusing on is the win part. Now the when part is essentially, when do you want this trigger to happen? Do you want this to happen on a button click or do you want it to happen on a page load? Most of the time we kind of stick with those two, you know, page loads and a button click, but there's a lot more options that you can choose. Now to even boil it down even further, and this really goes down to the concept of adjusting any type of programming or trigger developments inside of any tool is down to these different concepts here. Now, the first concept to understand is the event. When does this actually happen? The second one is the command. You're telling Storyline or you're telling whatever program that you're using to do something. What are you telling it to do? And this, not necessarily with Storyline, even though you can group them together, is you can give it a list of commands. When you're working with JavaScript, you're working with any type of program that handles these types of triggers, a lot of the times you can have more than one command and that's kind of grouped together. Now, the last part is in what condition. When you're working with triggers, do you always want this trigger to happen or do you want this trigger to only happen in certain situations? If you want this trigger to only happen in certain situations, that is a condition. And we'll dive into conditions in a different video. I have some other videos on it as well. But right now we're more focused on the actual trigger and when that trigger happens. But let's break it down even further. So let's give this example right here, just to work it into a real world example. Let's say you have a remote and I have a TV remote right here. Now the TV remote has a command inside of it when I hit the power button. And so that power button will basically turn on my TV. Well, the power button, the button itself is listening for that event. And so that is the event of when it gets clicked, it's listening for it. When that event gets clicked, it's then going to do the command, which the command is turn on the TV. So the programmer, whoever programmed this, basically put inside of the remote a listening device or some ability to listen for it and then some command of what to happen or what to do when that button gets clicked. 
And that really is essentially when you're working with programming websites or something like that, that that's what it comes down to. Having a command, instructions of what you want to happen, and then having some type of listener listen for that to happen. When that happens, that event happens, then do this type of command. So if you break it down to storyline, that's essentially what we're doing as well, is we have a command, and that command, that whatever we want to happen, is going to happen when this other event happens. Now, you can also have other types of events, like in the example of a TV, if I had a smart home, I could have like blinds come in, I could have my Hue Philips Hue lights turn to a certain color. So that is where that group of commands or inside a JavaScript, it's also known as a function. So you're grouping these commands together. Inside a storyline, it's uh, the ability to group different triggers together and we'll talk about that in a second as well. So that is the list of commands. Now, this could also, when I click on the, the power button, it could do other things based on the time of date. And so that is the condition. What happens at 7 o'clock in the morning could be different than what happens at 7 p.m. at night. So if you want some type of functionality like that, that's where you have to add on a condition. The logic is basically if I want something to always happen when this event happens. So let's stick with a button click. If I want the TV to always turn on no matter what time of day, I don't need to add any type of condition. It comes down to that if keyword. If you want something to happen only in certain situations, that's where you need to have some type of condition. All right, so let's go back to this trigger window. This trigger window has the action. What happens in this case, it's gonna be jump to slide. So that is our command. So when does it happen? Well, right now it happens when this rectangle is clicked. That's the event. And again, most of the time we stick with that, but I'm gonna explore other ways that we can actually do this. And then finally, and this is more optional, and that's why there is the inside of parentheses, the optional keyword, when do we want this to happen? Do we only want this to happen in certain situations? If we only want it to happen in certain situations, then we're going to add a condition when this is true, or if it's not true, do something else. So that is really the basics of a trigger. So let's go ahead and dive into Storyline here. I'm going to hide my screen here. We're going to jump into Storyline, and I have a couple different pages here kind of built out. All right, so I'm going to go into my screen here, and I'm going to click on or create just a button. I don't want to just get too detailed with here. I want to just stick with the basic stuff right now. So right now, we have this button. Now, if I want to add a trigger, you come over to Storyline on the right-hand side. You click on the new trigger button here, and this will pull up that window that we've been looking at. So the first thing I want to do is what endpoint. What do I want to have happen? That's the trigger. So in this case, it could be jump to slide. It could be change the state of an object. It could be play some audio. It could be restart the course, exit the course, send over an XAPI statement. We have a lot of different commands that we can work with here. Now, the second part is the when section. This is where we only or we tend to stick with just the, the click, but there is a lot more options. And I think those who explore these options are the ones that really stand out as storyline developers or any kind of developer here. And this goes true, or this is true with any tool that you may be using, Captivate or Domino or Lector or anything like this. If you adjust that event, the win section, then you can go ahead and do more with what you're trying to get out of. Let's explore that a little bit. So right now it says user clicks. But you could also have when the user double clicks or right clicks. If you're creating some type of simulation and part of that simulation, the user needs to right click, well, then you can do it based on the event based on this. So you've already established what action happens, but now you need to establish when that action happens. So user clicks outside. So anywhere outside of that object, that means this is the correct object, but anything outside of this object it's going to fire this event. So maybe you show a layer or something like that. So hopefully you're just at least, um, this is the first section, but at least you're understanding the power of using these different events. And you're still doing the same type of action that you've been doing with the click, but you're triggering it at different times or at different points here. So when a state gets to a certain point, so if a state is visited or a state is turned to hover or something like that, you can trigger an event to happen off of that. So if I have a drag and drop and I have the item drop into a certain drag, drag zone, 
I can have based on the state changing, if that state changes, I can have something happen as well. So you don't need to use variables. You don't need to change a variable. You're just listening for a state at that point and or even multiple states. You can do that as well. And what happens is, especially with the state, and let's dive into this a little bit. If I click on state right here, it gives me additional options. So these additional options are like, what additional objects do I want to be listening for? And which is an important part. So make sure that you explore whatever option gives you once you select that event here. So even when an animation completes, now this could be the animation on the timeline or this can be in a separate animation, like a separate object on your timeline as well, or when objects intersect. So that means if you have two objects and you're doing some type of game, for example, and you have like this little progress thing coming up here and then all of a sudden it intersects with another object, you could trigger something else. You can show a layer like you've reached your maximum uh, point level or you've uh, won the game or something like that. You could be listening for that instead of like listening for a variable, you could be listening for when these objects intersect there or even like when they're done intersecting and they've expanded out or have gone beyond uh, that or an object enters a slide or object leaves a slide. The intersection ends. That's when the they're done intersecting and they've gone beyond uh, each other there. That could be some type of like I'm thinking like a dynamite thing where you have like a little animation. And as soon as it goes beyond that point, it can then um, trigger this whatever object or layer that you want to show or when a user presses a key or when the object loses focus. So if I'm typing something and I click somewhere else, that's usually when the object loses focus there or when media completes variable changes, which we've probably done. Dial turns to a certain object or a certain number or a slider moves at all, you could be listening for when that slider moves and show something. And that one is probably where you'd want to have a condition. So if the slider moves, you probably want to have show layer two if it's on number two or show layer one if it's on layer number one or if it's on the variable is one, basically. So a lot of different possibilities, timeline starts, timeline reaches, drag over and so forth. So I just wanted to explore that a little bit. I mean, we didn't really get into a lot of examples. I'll probably create more videos on this in the future, but at least setting the stage for these events and thinking of them as events and being able to expand your interaction beyond um, just click inside of whatever you're building here. And I wanted to just dive in and talk a little bit about that. And this is the reason why I think Storyline still has an edge over something like Articulate Rise. Rise doesn't allow us to add custom triggers. I mean, it has a lot of it kind of pre-built, which is fine, especially if you're new. But you lose the flexibility when you don't have the ability to add on these triggers or conditions or or events and other things like that. So I really do wish they add this type of stuff to rise. So I wanted to explore that a little bit. Hopefully that was helpful for you just to kind of high level understand events and especially what you can do with events and triggers inside of Articulate Storyline. If you need any other type of clarification, head on over to my YouTube channel. Click that like button and subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit that bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows me to continue to make these videos here. But also, if you want to leave a comment, if you have a question, something wasn't clear, or if there's something else you want to have explained, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'm happy to take a look at those. But that's all I have for today. So thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next time.